I'm a big fan of the Bronx Thermal by Tim Morris, especially the rusty fascia that he's done using paint techniques. And I need to do something on my Rich Lawn Railroad to kind of jazz it up since it's such a small railroad. So I thought I'd give that a try to see if I can do something like that on my railroad. For information on how I did the construction of the fascia itself, check out the Model Railroad Hobbyist website. But basically it's hardboard. I used some strips of uh, PVC to make the bands at the top and the bottom and used wood dowel, uh, or dowel pins to make the rivets themselves, which are spaced every three inches. On this first picture, I've added letters that are wood that I've glued on, and I've also painted a base coat of a brown or red oxide paint. I wanted to add some interest to the fascia by adding texture, so I used some uh, dark brown caulking, which I stippled on with a paintbrush randomly here and there, and put that on after the first, or the uh, sponge coat but before I actually went back and added another coat on top of those particular areas. Here's a closer view where you can see what it looks like after adding the texture and then painting or stippling on top of the uh, area. After viewing a couple of videos on YouTube about using the uh, different types of paints and techniques to create the uh, faux rust, I went ahead and purchased some products from my local hobby shop here. Uh, a kind of a beige-ish color paint, a very orangey paint, brown, and two different shades of dark gray, almost black. And I'll use those on the fascia uh, and using different techniques to apply them to get the proper look for the rust. I mixed some of the orange paint with the uh, dark brown paint, added some water, and using a sea sponge, simply took it and dabbed it onto the existing color, uh, attempting to have a random uh, coating and also making sure that I didn't totally obscure the paint behind it. So if you continue in one spot too much you'll actually cover it up and lose the effect. This uh, took some time and um, by the way I'm taking shots here using my hat cam which is a uh, one of the Polaroid Q cameras attached to the top of my hat so some of the angles may not be the best nor the lighting but I think you can get the idea on what it looks like to do the technique here. You have to be patient when doing this technique because uh, you can overdo it and obscure it. And um, it does look a little different why it's wet, so it's not a bad idea to work around the room and come back and finish up uh, in a different area. It took me about 45 minutes to go around the room and do the sponge technique on everything, um, and which wasn't too bad. And it does look different with different lights, so you have to keep that, into, and keep that in mind as you do the technique. The paint dries fairly quickly, so I went on to the next step, which was using some of the gray, different colors grays, to do highlighting. I added a little bit of water to that, and just dab it on here and there, and then use my finger to sort of blend it. It's amazing, because the uh, finger seems to work pretty well for that. So I'm just going around here and actually touching that. You also notice some areas that were a little rustier looking along the seam there. And that's where I took some of the orangish color and dabbed on a second coat uh, in those areas and then blend it in to add a little more variety to the colors. I was referring to my reference material as I was doing this and I noticed that there are some of a orangish yellowish color on rust and so I used some of my weathering powder with a brush to apply it here and there uh, and use the brush to blend it in and also use my finger uh, and this is just a matter of personal choice on the way you want it to look. I did find that um, in some areas where I put on too heavily, I had to go back and just wet my finger and took some of it off. Uh, in other areas, I actually added different colors back on top, darker colors on top of it to uh, add a little more variety. So it's uh, there's no set pattern on this, just wherever you think it looks good. And um, I've got to still work on my letters here and get those uh, the way I want them. but. Uh, just keep working at it with the different colors and different techniques uh, and keep referring to your uh, pictures to make sure that it does look realistic. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. Creating a rusty fascia for your layout is fun and easy and not very expensive. If you decide to give it a try for your layout, please be sure to post your results on the Model Railroad Hobbyist website.